Good afternoon, Portland police and Portland government. Yesterday, I was drawn here to file a police report because of a short incident that I was trying to prevent from happening with a certain young man from City Team Ministries across the river. I was able to leave with a police report number to prevent altercation, altercation that leads to gunfight and eventually death. So yesterday after talking to the officer here, I went over to, to the park, Pioneer Square Park, and uh, preached on Romans 10 not, verses 1 through 21. The gist of Romans 10 is, I think it's in those passages of the Bible where it says that um, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you believe in the Lord Jesus and believe that God raised them from the dead, you shall be saved. It also talks about you cannot be saved without a preacher and you cannot preach unless you are sent. So I shared that with the city of Portland yesterday. But that in itself did not put an end to the situation that I'm in with the people that I've been dealing with. At two o'clock in the morning this morning, somebody came into the tent, violated me again, left me in pain. So I woke up at two o'clock in the morning in pain and outside of the tent, a man came out, I never saw who he was. By the time I put on my shoes and opened the door, he was gone. He cursed me out and left. And I thought, okay, I'm not exactly sure why I had to be cursed out. I didn't do anything to this man and I don't know who he was or who he sent or who sent him. So, um, but I felt so much hatred from what the man had said and I could feel it in the spirit. It felt like a thick fog that needed to be cut with a knife. In any case, I started talking to the public. This is at 2 a.m. There's nobody outside. And, um, and I said to them, as a foreigner, immigration does not tell us foreigners that we have an obligation to submit to any American. Immigration doesn't say we have to be your servants, your slaves, your sex partners. Immigration doesn't say that we owe you money, we owe you service. Immigration doesn't give us a list of do's and don'ts. Immigration hands us a certificate, the one that I've been showing you, and that's it. Immigration doesn't even tell us about the LGBTQ community. So if there is a problem on the American side, whether it be with white Americans or black Americans, Spanish American, Asian Americans, you need to take it to the police department. Call non-emergency. If you have to, call your governor, your mayor, your chief of police, your district attorney, get a lawyer, whatever it is. But don't stand outside of someone's tent cursing them out, making them feel as if they're responsible for whatever evil has happened to you. We're not responsible for anything that has happened to you, so you shouldn't take it out on anybody that's on the tent. Whether it be a church tent, or whether it be just another homeless American, it's not fair to any of us having to lodge in a tent for the evening and then for somebody to come by and threaten us, attack us, assault us, and whatever, still our property and so on and so forth. So I left it at that. I went back to sleep again, and again they came back into the tent and sexually assaulted, assaulted my genital. And I thought, yes, this is just not gonna work. This Haitian woman coming in here, or these women coming in, is just not gonna work. We cannot live the Christian life being assaulted by these people continuously. Somebody needs to talk to these people or the government needs to hit these people because they're thick-headed. Gabriel says to me, well, I'm being hit. 
And I'm thinking, well, how am I going to help you, Gabriel? I'm out here and I can't go back in yet. How am I going to help you? You hitting me because you're being hit by MacArthur or you're being hit by the community. I can't do anything for you. And you probably deserve the hit because of how many times you've hit others. So I went on with my day. Went to the mall about 12 o'clock looking for um, mobile homes perhaps in San Francisco. Use mobile homes here and I did find some things but the repair job on the inside is not worth it. So I'm sitting there and an African American brother, big, I mean huge, you know, muscular, big black guy walks by and he's talking about you a faggot and, and, and you're and blah blah blah, you're a faggot. And I'm thinking, whoa, my regards to Satan. That was my response to the man. I was offended by how he dealt with me. And um I get up to go use the restroom and one of the companies that's there at the mall in the basement setting up, for whatever purpose or reason, the woman decides, one of the women working there decides to come out. I don't remember what she said, but I'll be honest with you, as a Christian man, I shouldn't have responded that way. I just said, man, F you. You know, it just pissed me off that for whatever reason, they decided to come out again. You know, and... Uh, and I got to thinking, what exactly is going to happen tonight? You know? Melinda says to me, you know, I hear Melinda, uh, John's daughter. She says to me, you can't go back down to uh, Southern California. You can't go to San Francisco. And if you go to San Francisco, you can't practice Christianity. You have to stay in. You can't preach the gospel to the people of San Francisco. There's just too many um, from the community that, that are there that are against you. Okay? So you can't go down there. And if you stay up here, you're not going to become anything. They're not going to give you a job. They're not going to give you a home. I mean, you can go back to the state that gave you a naturalization certificate, but I sort of feel like somebody just closed the book in my entire life. Okay? I felt like somebody just literally kicked or pulled the carpet from under me when I heard those words, you can't do nothing. I thought the Constitution gave us the, you know, the Declaration of the Independence gave us the freedom to live in this country. And I'm thinking, what is this? I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, God, I can't look for a job. I can't look for a home that I can keep. If I go and I buy a mobile home here, Guy Franklin and his mother, or Guy Franklin and his posse and his people, or MacArthur and his, are gonna take it away from me. I thought we lived in a country where people were given a fair chance. What is this plotting that these people have against me? I, I mean, I can't move forward and I can't go back. I can't go back to New York State. I can't move forward to another state. I got to stay here in Oregon. The Lord says here in Oregon, nowhere else. If I leave and go to the east, it's death. If I go to the south, it's the clan. And if I go to the north, it's the snake community. So, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, I don't understand this. Why am I the target? Am I the target because of the word of God? Am I the target because of a crime I've committed? What exactly is the issue here? So I, I thumbed through scripture and I found a verse that I thought was really interesting coming out of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 says this, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. And this is Galatians 5 verse 14. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. What exactly is Paul saying here to the church of Galatia that I am now reiterating to you? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Who is my neighbor? When Jesus had told them, you need to love your neighbor as yourself, somebody in the crowd says, who is my neighbor, Lord? 
And I think the the uh, the parable that he gave to them was that there was a man once who was jumped and beat up and left on the side of the road to die. A publican walked by the man and did not do what? Take care of the man. He sort of like looked at him and says, no, I'm not touching that. A Pharisee saw the man from a distance and crossed the street and says, I'm not going near that man and, and went about his day. A third man came and bandaged up the man, brought him into an inn, cleaned him up and told the, the people at the front desk, hey, listen, when this guy, if whatever this guy needs, give it to me, okay? Give it to me. In other words, charge it to my account. And when I come back around, I'll pay for the whole thing. And then the Lord turned to the crowd and says, now who is, who is the neighbor who was being a good neighbor to that man? Somebody says, well, obviously the one who what? Took care of him. The one who walked by him while he laid there was not being a good neighbor. The one who crossed the street to avoid him was not being a good neighbor. But the one who actually took the time to bandage him up, clean him up, take him into the inn, that was the good neighbor. So Paul says here, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Are the Native Americans your neighbor? Are the African Americans your neighbor? Are the Haitians in the Caribbean, the Cubans your neighbor? Are the Spanish your neighbor? The people you're trying to figure out whether or not we should continue to build the wall? What about the Canadians? Are they your neighbor? Are the homeless your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? And what's your position? Do you just walk by them? Do you cross the street to avoid them? Or do you bandage them up and put them back on their feet so they can continue living the life that God has given to them? Am I your neighbor? Or when you look at me and you hear me, am I your enemy? Is God's son your neighbor? Is his church your neighbor? So I want to encourage you with these words and remind you if you want to make the Lord your neighbor, if you want to make the church your neighbor, guess how you do that? By loving your neighbor as yourself. The same way you would take care of yourself is how you take care of a neighbor. But sometimes that could be dangerous. Why? Because as soon as you take care of them, they can turn on you and turn against you. Right? I can't go back to being a neighbor to Gabriel Franklin. It'll backfire on me. I can't go back to being a neighbor to John MacArthur and his church. They told me blatantly, we will not give it back to you. But yet God commands that we forgive. God commands that we love. The Lord says in Matthew 7, if you do not forgive your neighbor or your brother, I will not forgive you. The Lord says, love your neighbor. How could you say you love God and yet you hate your neighbor, you plot against your neighbor, you conspire against your neighbor, you rape your neighbor, you torture your neighbor, you torment your neighbor, you come in the middle of the night when your neighbor is sleeping to taser him, pierce him, cut him, sodomize him, rape him and so on, murder him and you know the rest of the list. If you want to give your life to Christ today so you learn to love your neighbor, respect your neighbor, simply give your life to Christ. Say, Father, forgive me for my sin. I repent of my sin. I repent of my unrighteousness. May you bless me with your spirit of promise. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody want to do that? Anybody want to give their lives to Jesus and love their neighbor? You could do it by yourself, or I could do it with you. Let today be your day of salvation. Amen.